I am here with the man, the legend, Tavoris Bell, T Bell, Night Train. We could go on and on. Thousand point score in three years at URI. Thank you for coming on. You know, what I want to talk about just kind of what went into your decision coming to URI, you know, playing in New York, saying, all right, you know, I'm going to spend my time in Kingston, Rhode Island. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot to that because um, when I uh, I was recruited by um, Coach Harris early in my career, um, I had signed with UCLA. Matter of fact, I can tell you even further back, Al Skinner, he's from where I grew up at. Okay. He's from um, he's from Terrace Avenue, Hempstead. And um, he was recruiting me hard, but my mother didn't want me to go to Rhode Island for some reason at that time. She didn't really get what was going on. She didn't understand the scope of things, but um, at that point, I, I, I was still open because they had came to the house for a visit and everything. I had talked to Al Skinner a lot. Real, real solid guy. Um, but then we ended up, um, I ended up that next summer after uh, my mother told Hasha in uh, Rhode Island that I wasn't going to, it was too close. Um, I signed verbally with uh, UCLA. Okay. We went to an unofficial visit and I signed with UCLA. Me and Lamar signed with UCLA. Yeah. But um, Coach Harry ended up getting fired for um, paying for one of his uh, recruits' friend's meal or something of the sort. So when he got fired, I was going to prep school in Massachusetts and um, I got a call like five, six in the morning to go to Rhode Island for an official visit. Uh, my assistant coach for prep school, I mean, high school, he came and got me. He took me to URI. I went on a visit. On my visit, my unofficial visit, they let me drive a, uh, you know what got me? It was the boat. They let me drive a yacht. Nice. They let me drive a yacht. No, really. They let me drive a yacht. They had let me drive it all around Newport. And and I was sold on it. It was just the energy there. I, I was really sold on Rhode Island from yeah. you know when they were coming to recruit me younger, I didn't understand it. I didn't know what type of atmosphere. It reminds me of home so much. Because yeah. I'm from Long Island. I, I'm around the water a lot. So yeah. once I got to, you know, go up there and, and, and meet the people and kind of get an understanding of the energy there, I was totally for it. Yeah. And Coach Harry, I always wanted to be coached by Coach Harry. Yeah, that's so awesome. That and, you know, you had mentioned the energy there. Obviously, they were coming off, you know, an unbelievable season. They had, you know, a great team, obviously. Wheeler, you know, you had Mobley, obviously, graduating, right? You still had Reynolds Dean, Murphy, Luther Clay there, and in come you and Lamar. You know, what was... And I got to travel. I got to travel with that team. Um, oh, Because when I, I left prep school, I came at the, uh, that January... Yeah. So I got to travel with that team um, when we went to uh, St. Louis okay. and we lost to Stanford. I was at that game. I was actually on the bench. And Preston Murphy had got hurt that uh, yep. that um, tournament. And it was like a, 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 it was so close to me being able to play that tournament. A lot of people don't know, but um, I remember Coach Garrett, Tom Garrett, he had came to me and said, they're going to, um, they might take off, lift your red shirt. And I was like, Really? And I was so excited to play, but then at the last minute, they changed their mind. Yeah. But I think I would have made a difference on that team defensively. But for that tournament, I think we would have had a bigger, a better chance, I think, defensively. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but, you know, that, that freshman year, um, you know, obviously you have it, having Murphy, Reynolds, Dean coming back, Luther Clay as well. You know, can you just kind of describe – you know, just the practice, the lead up, you guys were, you know, in the top 25 and you guys just had talent all over the place, but just that first year for you. Listen, our red shirt team was a whole nother college team. Like, yeah. like <laughs> we had Lamar, Ed Brown, me. Um, it was three, uh, it was a couple of guys that didn't even end up playing. That would have been a big deal for us, but um, Tiger yeah, Tiger Womack, uh, who else? I'm trying to remember. We had a solid, like, like practices every day because of our, our red shirt team. I think that's what kind of pushed those guys. Yeah. Because, you know, Luther Clay matching up with Ed Brown every day. Tony O matching up with Lamar every day. Um, They used to have me guard Catino and Tyson all practice. This is what I'm telling you. When I got to practice, I didn't get to do the drills, the, the, the stuff that you normally do. Coach Harry used to be like, T Bell, I want you for the whole practice, every drill, you got to guard Tyson. All the guards definitely had me guard, which was very useful down the line. Yeah. Defensively, because I ended up being one of the, I mean, a big deal on defense. So it was it was torture. I was a freshman. I thought they were hazing me. I was really like, I went home for my first, like, 
two, three weeks of practice depressed because Katino Mobley was destroying me. Like, like he, he, I learned a lot from him. Yeah. Really, I learned a lot from them guys. I mean, especially, you know, being a freshman, not knowing what to expect, coming to campus, not knowing if you're, you're, you're ready for that level of basketball. Um, It was a big deal because the guys were so, like, inviting. They were so friends. I mean, family orientated. So, yeah, it was, it was like, it was like I never, it was like I was in a family that I never left. Like, it was just weird. Yeah. It was weird. It, it felt like it was supposed to happen that way. And, and you I, know, that that year, you know, obviously a lot of ebbs and flows. Um, you know, I remember even as a fan watching you guys. And again, there was high expectations because of the guys brought in because of the year before. You know, you ended that year, uh, the regular season. You guys lost two. I remember talking to Reynolds Dean. You know, they lost. I think you guys lost senior night to it was Fordham or St. Bonaventure. But what was your mentality going into that A-10 tournament, knowing you had to win that to get to the NCAs? We lost to George Washington. George Washington, that's right. We lost to George Washington because it was a bad loss. Um, we had lost our last two games. But, but I can tell you this, our energy right. didn't waver from them losses. Like, we were still in good energy. We still, you know, I guess everybody has a bad day, but um, it didn't bother us in a sense. Like, we still kept our eye on the prize. And I think when the uh, Millennium 10 started, it was, it was the point of us just – putting all the pieces together and making it work. Like it was, it was just, it just, everything just happened the right way. It was like a fairy tale. Yeah. It was and still fairy tale. I got to ask you, are you mad? They didn't give you the ball and they gave the ball to Lamar with five seconds left against Temple. Um, <laughs> nah, I'm not, I'm not. So you got to understand me and Lamar played all through high school. So I was used to them thinking he was the star and I really was. So I, I kind of let him, I kind of let him live on that one. You know, we talked about it after. Yeah. He, he really gave me a high five. I said, Keep I appreciate you letting me take that shot. It was, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I, you know, you know, I'm, it doesn't bother me. You know, my, 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 my whole attitude is, is let my team do what they're supposed to do. So I like it. my <laughs> job was to be a cheerleader at that point. Cause, you know, I wasn't a good free throw shooter. And um, I had to sit the, uh, I was on a bench when that happened. And I made a mental note from that moment to make sure that I can make my free throw. And if you look at my career, every year my free throw went up like 10%. So yep. nah, that was a big deal though. Like for that moment that I couldn't be on the court, but I was on the court. So yeah. Do you I mean Brother, what do you what stands out for you most about that moment? I mean, just seeing that ball go in. Obviously, you guys all just follow Lamar the opposite end of the floor, but just what what do you relive in terms of that moment? As soon as that shot went in, um Everything we went through just came to 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 the to the front of everything. Like everything we've been through that whole year with the ups and downs, the man losses, we, a lot of stuff we went through off the court. Um, all of that stuff it just surfaced, and and, and it was an emotional time for all of us because we we know we put in a lot of work to get to that point. It was Atlanta, it was Rhode Island's first Atlantic Ten championship ever, and they had a lot of good teams. And and to be that first team to actually bring that jewelry to Rhode Island was a big deal for us. So, yep. and it, it, it was funny because I remember running around the court and I run to L and he looking. He don't even know what to do. He didn't even know whether to cry, yell. He just had this blank like I can't believe it face. If you go look at the video, he couldn't. He didn't know what to do. Yeah. It was it was it was just unbelievable. 